This is what it was like when the value jet cargo hold caught fire, a special kind of hell in the skies. The CIA official accused of spying for Russia. What was in it for him? What do we do now about Russia? And NBC News in depth tonight, teenagers in smoking. How important was the teenage market to Philip Morris? Read this memo. From NBC News World Headquarters in New York, this is NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw. Good evening. It's hard to imagine a fire that hot, moving that fast, that destructive. But today, families of the value jet victims and others had a horrifying idea of just what happened. It was a vivid display, and even on videotape, terrifying even now. Here's NBC's Robert Hager. Despite a warning, the images would be unsettling to families of the value jet victims. Investigators rolled tape of tests conducted two weeks ago to see whether boxes packed with 120 oxygen-producing canisters, similar to those loaded in value jets cargo, could ignite themselves simply by discharging a single canister, as may have happened accidentally aboard value jet, and setting off a chain reaction. What investigators learned stunned them. Not only did the canisters catch half the time, when they did, they heated to an astounding 3,000 degrees. Seven times hotter than exhaust from the jet engine of a plane. Hotter than lava from a volcano or a blast furnace. One third what it is on the surface of the sun. What you see here is a time lapse of a 15 minute fire. All the while accompanied by the eerie whine of oxygen shooting from the canisters. The NTSB's fire expert, Merritt Berkey, who worked on the investigation of the blow-up of the shuttle Challenger and now supervised this test, could barely believe it. This is the hottest fire I've ever seen in a test apparatus. In yet another test, baggage and a tire were packed around the boxes of canisters to add fuel to the fire, as would have been the case in the value jet cargo. Watch what happened as the tire exploded. Investigators suspect a similar explosion of a tire in the value jet's cargo may account for the popping sound heard by pilots of the doomed plane just before shouts of fire from the passenger cabin. And while investigators said these tests didn't exactly match the conditions aboard value jet that day, if the fire on the plane was anything like this test's 3,000 degrees, no wonder it brought the plane down and took the lives of all 110 aboard. Robert Hager, NBC News, Miami. In another part of Florida, there were no mishaps at all today as NASA sent the shuttle Columbia on a science mission in weather so clear you could plainly see the solid rockets separate. Columbia is the oldest shuttle in the fleet. It also carries the oldest person ever to fly in space, 61-year-old astronaut Story Musgrave. In Los Angeles, another tragedy and a continuing search for answers today to find out just what happened that night when Nicole Simpson and Ron Goldman were murdered. Today, Cato Kalin was back in the only starring role he's ever had. And NBC's George Lewis is at the Simpson Civil Trial. George? Well, Tom, today Cato Kalin added some new twists to a familiar story. He said the thumps he heard on his apartment wall the night of the murders sounded like someone falling. Earlier, the civil jury heard from Police Sergeant Rob Lerner, who was dispatched to Nicole Simpson's house in 1993 after she complained that O.J. Simpson had broken in her door during an argument. Lerner's partner carried a hidden tape recorder, and the tape was played in court. He gets a very animalistic look in him. I'll say it's popped out, his eyes are black, and just black, and cold, like an animal. Simpson's lawyers are going to try to prove that police were out to frame their client. But the tape tells another story, the cops trying to protect a celebrity from negative publicity. Because of her celebrity status, because of her willingness to cooperate, we don't want to make a big, big thing out of this. Simpson will get to tell his side of the story when he takes the stand starting Friday. Tom? Thanks very much, George Lewis, tonight in Los Angeles. And still ahead, our special series on charitable giving in America, we're calling it who cares? Tonight, it's a $10 trillion nest egg. But how much of that will go to good causes? Uh, it's become um, a way of life. We give blood, we vote, we volunteer, and we give money. Who will wind up with the fortune of the World War II generation? Up next, damage control for the CIA in the wake of the latest spy scandal. Question is, how much damage?
light bladder control protection, poise pads absorb 30% faster than before and lock liquid in better than the leading maxis. So you'll be comfortable, confident. Poise pads, now with the moisture lock liner, give you the freedom to be yourself. Go ahead, celebrate. What causes denture odor? Come close and we'll show you. Germs. Only Efferdent Plus has Listerine ingredients. It kills odor-causing germs so you can get this close. Efferdent Plus with Listerine ingredients. Kill the germs, kill the odor. Before introduction, a Moen faucet is tested at least a half million times against leaks and drips. So it's hard to find a more reliable faucet. No matter how you look at it. Moen. Buy it for looks. Buy it for life. What would you call a carpet store with more colors and styles of DuPont Stainmaster carpet? More expert advice and personal service. More than 750 locations across North America. Now, what if that carpet store gave you less to worry about with one of the best guarantees in the business? Plus, no payments, no interest for six months, and such huge buying power you're assured of paying less. You'd have to call that one great carpet store or Carpet One, where you always get more and less. Call now. If Russia is so dependent on the United States for economic help these days, for political support, even for security questions, why was it buying a spy in the American CIA? And why would a career CIA officer sell out? All that haunts official Washington tonight. We get more now from NBC's Pete Williams. Word today of a formal protest to the Kremlin. The U.S. State Department calling the recruitment of Harold Nicholson as a spy unacceptable and inconsistent with the pattern of relations between the U.S. and Russia. But as Nicholson's arrest shows, old spying habits die hard, even after the Cold War. Intelligence officials tell NBC News that Russia's spy apparatus still aggressively works to find sources inside the U.S. government. Alexander Lebed, fired just a month ago as Russia's national security advisor, tried today to put a diplomatic face on the Nicholson case, calling it a hangover from the Cold War. But we all are, whether we wish it or not, we are products of that war. We have a certain mentality that has taken shape. And intelligence insiders say the U.S. still actively spies on Russia, watching its huge stockpile of nuclear, chemical, and biological weapons, the world's largest. Russia remains the only country in, on the globe where decisions or actions by the government could cause our society to disappear. All this in the hands of a government considered unstable. But some intelligence analysts think the CIA should pay more attention to the growing nuclear capabilities of third world countries like China and India. One espionage expert says the trouble is, a posting to Moscow is more exciting. There's adventure, there's romance, there are thrills, and it's hard to give that up. It's hard to say, I'm going to go down and, and spend my time uh, spying on Brazil. The CIA's immediate problem is finding out if there are more spies inside. Tonight, U.S. officials say they're considering expelling some Russian diplomats, a further protest of this latest public example of a habit that neither country wants to break. Pete Williams, NBC News, Washington. Speaking of holdovers from the Cold War in Rome today, there was a meeting that was once thought to be impossible. Fidel Castro was welcomed to the Vatican by Pope John Paul. Tonight, even the unapologetic communist Castro, born a Catholic, called today's meeting a miracle. Here's NBC's Jim Maceda. Even Fidel Castro seemed slightly intimidated, perhaps by the pomp or the sumptuous beauty or just the weight of this historic encounter with Pope John Paul in the Pope's private library. Here was one of the last Marxist dictators on earth meeting with an anti-communist symbol who as Pope contributed to the fall of the Soviet Empire, Castro's former patron. But quickly, the ice was broken and each in Spanish offered the other much of what he was seeking. The Pope wanted an invitation to the only Latin American country he hasn't visited, Cuba, and he got it. The Holy Father answered, thank you uh, for that. And then both of them said, well, let us do it as soon as possible. Probably next year, when Castro will get the blessing of the papal visit. But the Pope did not attack Castro's human rights record. He did focus on helping some five million Cuban Catholics on an island where priests and nuns are banned entry and the church has no access to the media. 
The Vatican pointed out that neither today's unprecedented meeting nor a papal trip to Cuba would in any way sanction Castro's government, which it opposes. It indicates the desire of the Holy Father to build bridges to peoples, not to approve of any communist system. Whatever the pressures the Pope tries to exert on Cuba and Castro, today the fiery revolutionary was subdued and seemingly approved of the power and glory all around him. Jim Maceda, NBC News, the Vatican. In New York today, the Texaco executive who secretly recorded those Texaco tapes was himself charged with obstruction of justice. Richard Lundwall recorded himself and other Texaco executives using racial insults and plotting to destroy documents. Lundwall's lawyer called the charges against his client ironic. Wall Street today, the Dow rocketing back into record territory, up more than 50 points in very heavy trading today. The Nasdaq was up as well. When we come back, NBC News in depth tonight. Is it another smoking gun in the tobacco battles? What was behind one cigarette giant's intense interest in children? We'll have answers for you tonight in depth. I think real estate would be highly lucrative. Now there's a computer that puts you in touch with the world like never before. You're the one. At the touch of a button, you get TV, FM stereo, even a digital answering machine. Hey, Doug, this is Donald Trump. Just got your email. The Toshiba Infinia with the Intel Pentium processor. When you're ready for a different computer. Lenscrafters has these new lightweight titanium P frames from Luxottica. They weigh about 40% less than other metal frames. They're fashionable, comfortable. Look at the difference. Wow. I love seeing them smile when that happens. Lens crafters, helping people see better one hour at a time. When you use Pam, the food gets all the attention. Because Pam never adds a funny aftertaste. Clean, 100% natural Pam. Taste the food, not the spray. This is no ordinary toothbrush. This is a Braun Oral-B plaque remover. The new Braun Oral-B Ultra. Its ultra-speed oscillating brushing action removes plaque better than an ordinary toothbrush. That's not our opinion. That's clinical fact. And its unique cup-shaped brush head cleans even below the gum line. Dentists recommend changing your toothbrush every three months. We suggest you change it forever. With the Braun Oral-B Ultra. NBC News in depth tonight, cigarettes and kids. As this country gets ready for the great American smoke out on Thursday, NBC News has uncovered still another unsettling document about how one tobacco company paid very close attention to kids as customers. This on a day when a new study of Americans' health habits says that one third of the country's high school seniors are smoking now. That's up 5% from 1989. And as NBC's Bob Kerr tells us tonight in his in-depth report, one cigarette company was looking at kids as important consumers for years. Is it going to be oh, like yeah. a... Philip Morris insists teenagers are not the customers it's looking for. Just a few months ago, the tobacco giant paid millions to spread that message in ads all over the country. But NBC News has learned that in the past, at least, Philip Morris was interested enough in young smokers to be worried about the declining number of smokers from 12 to 18 years old. This internal memo obtained by NBC News focused on young smokers. Dated 1981, it was written to the Vice President of Research and Development. It is important to know as much as possible about teenage smoking patterns and attitudes. Today's teenager is tomorrow's potential regular customer. The memo cited studies that predicted a big decline in the overall teenage population by 1985. It cited smoking patterns of kids as young as 12. With Marlboro riding high for Philip Morris, the 1981 memo noted that a smaller teen population could hurt business. Because of our high share of the market among the youngest smokers, Philip Morris will suffer more than the other companies from the decline in the number of teenage smokers. And what really strikes you about these documents is how very dispassionate they are, how very cold and very calculating. And what they're talking about is addicting kids. Philip Morris says that's wrong. This memo, it says, proposes no action on teen smoking and suggests no strategy. The company also claims it is not inconsistent with its stated position that kids should not smoke.
Will you tell all your friends that cigarettes are dangerous? Still, with teen smoking on the rise, this new public health anti-smoking crusader has his work cut out for him. Bob Kerr, NBC News, Washington. Another front in the smoking war today in Massachusetts where officials unveiled new regulations requiring state-of-the-art nicotine testing for all cigarettes and disclosure of all cigarette additives on the labels. It's the first law of its kind in the nation. The tobacco companies are suing to try to stop it. Joining me now is the Massachusetts Attorney General, Scott Harshbarger. Mr. Berger, let me be the devil's advocate for just a moment. A lot of people would say, well, this is just a grandstand play. After all, most smokers know what's in cigarettes. This is just an effort on the part of elected officials in Massachusetts to, in some way, penalize economically the tobacco companies. Well, that's absolutely wrong. And the fact is that we're simply asking tobacco companies to play by the same rules that every legitimate industry now has to comply with. They have to tell the truth about their product, let people know what, what it includes. And that's all we're trying to do with the tobacco companies as a part of our overall effort to restrict their advertising and marketing to teenagers and young people. What impact do you think that this will have on teenage smoking, if any at all? I think the fact is that tobacco advertising has been directed at teenagers. We know that the vast majority of smokers as adults become addicted as teenagers. And the fact is that disclosing the truth about these products, restricting the advertising, will be a major way to try to help the next generation of young people not be the addicts that we face today. And that's why we're trying to get at this marketing mechanism by the tobacco companies. You claim that uh, cigarettes co cost uh, Massachusetts about 10,000 lives a year. I can already hear the tobacco executives saying, why don't they do something about alcohol? How many lives do uh, does alcohol cost in Massachusetts, for example? Well, the fact is that smoking is the major public health threat in this country. And we believe that tobacco companies ought to have to play by the same rules as other businesses. They ought to have to disclose the truth about their products and accept the consequences and take responsibility for what they've done. We're simply asking they play by the same rules and not target teenagers in their marketing efforts of a product that, if used as intended, kills. Thank you very much. Mr. Hartsberger, who is the Attorney General of Massachusetts. When we come back, the painful return to Rwanda for a half million refugees, and still ahead tonight, our special series on giving in America. They lived through the Depression, they won the World War. Now, where will all their money go? When I was young, Mom was always making sure I ate right. It wasn't always easy. <laughs> Well, now we're listening to our doctors and taking better care of our health with Insure. Insure is recommended number one by doctors as a source of complete balanced nutrition. More than a vitamin supplement, Insure has all the nutrients adults need to help stay healthy, active, be energetic. Drink Insure as a meal. Or in between, Insure. To your health, Mom. Uh-uh. To our health. Insure. Recommended number one by doctors. What's the perfect gift for the whole family? The gift of Prime Star Satellite Television. Up to 95 channels in digital picture and sound, and you don't have to buy the dish. You get everything you need starting at about a dollar a day. And now, if you sign up for multi-channel HBO, Cinemax, or Stars in the Encore Multiplex, you'll get the first month free. It's our gift to you and the perfect gift for your family. Call 1-800-PRIME-STAR or visit your local radio shack and enjoy the holidays. Hey, Dad. What are you doing up? We live in your mother's stuff, Peppers. <laughs> Hartford again, huh? Yeah. What are you taking? Tums, and I'm back for more. You still taking that stuff? Look, Dad, take a Pepsid AC. One tiny pill controls acid all night. So I can get some sleep. But next time, take one before dinner, and you can stop heartburn before it starts. Before it starts? You don't see me suffering, do you? <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys doing now? Uh, nothing, dear. We were talking about your, your no, peppers. Oh, peppers, yeah. I got some in the fridge. You can sleep heartburn free with Pepsid AC. You know, the only, you know, the only thing worse than a cold is finding the right cold medicine. I mean, there I am in aisle nine, kids hanging off the basket. Do I choose the red box, the blue box, what? And that's when I remembered Tavis D. It's clinically proven to work on colds. Tavis D has the only 12-hour antihistamine clinically proven to work on cold symptoms. <laughs> I am proving it right now. Proven safe Tavis D, the only one with 12 hours of proven relief. Ahead on the scene at 6, it has breathed new life into some of Nashville's inner city neighborhoods. Now, Dollar General plans on moving its headquarters here. We'll tell you how this could impact our economy. Also, 
you can be nice to workers and build the bottom line all at the same time. Don't miss our Focus 4 series, Managing Your Boss at 6. The United States will not be sending combat troops to Rwanda after all. Instead, the Pentagon is saying tonight that fewer than 1,000 logistical specialists will now be joining the international aid mission in Central Africa. It all changed, of course, when a half million refugees found their way back home. But for most of them, it was a painful experience. More tonight from NBC's Ron Allen, still there. <coughs> Through the front window of this tiny house, Bonafilda watches the stream of people returning to Rwanda, looking for the ones who murdered her family. I think some of those coming back are responsible, she says. The ones who killed my husband and my children were our neighbors. Twelve relatives in all were slaughtered. She survived the attack, but will forever bear the scar between her eyes and the pain in her heart. As Rwanda tries to rebuild and welcome back this flood of half a million refugees who are now residents again, it must also find a way to contain the ethnic tension that exploded here. During the spring of 1994, perhaps a million Tutsis were wiped out in one of the swiftest genocides ever. In the two and a half years since the genocide, not a single person has been tried and convicted of a crime. Now that all these people who fled after the massacres are coming home, the survivors of the killings want to know how many of them are guilty. We are breathing Rwanda air. It's different from Zaire. Etienne and his family just came back to Rwanda. He's hoping there can be reconciliation. Anyone who committed genocide, I think he didn't decide to come back. He and many others now plan to reclaim the homes they left. That's the law, according to a government policy, intended to convince more people to come home. But that also means Bonafilda soon will have no place to live. The people who murdered her family also destroyed their house. The owner of the place she's living in now claimed it yesterday. Hopefully he'll give me one room to stay in, she says, until I find a new home. For now, Rwanda is struggling to provide life's basic needs to the thousands who came back all at once. But soon it must also provide justice for those who never left. Ron Allen, NBC News, Gisenye, Rwanda. When Nightly News continues, our special series called Who Cares? But first, the remarkable legacy of just one woman who did care. Agnes Plum lived a quiet, humble life in this middle-class California neighborhood. But the woman who friends knew as generous and kind had a big secret. She was worth $107 million, a fortune inherited from her father's investment in the Kellogg Company more than 70 years ago. <laughs> when she died last year, Agnes Plum left her fortune to four children's charities. Okay. It was unbelievable. It was literally unbelievable. We couldn't fathom that kind of money. So much, one hospital wanted to name a wing after her, but she didn't want anyone to make a fuss. Agnes thought true giving should come no strings attached. Finally, great popcorn from your microwave. Power Pop. Presto Power Pop Microwave Multi Popper. Power Pop. Pops virtually every kernel. Pop with oil, pop without oil. Nothing pops like Power Pop. That's why it's endorsed by Orville Redenbacher. Power Pop. From Presto. By the end of the week, seven more lives will be saved. By the end of the day, 16 people who couldn't walk will. By the end of the hour, these special filters will help make 25,000 more gallons of water ready for drinking. And by the end of this message, one more premature baby will be protected. All of which is made possible with the help of a material we call plastic. First came Tagamet, then Zantac, then Pepsid, but the newest, Axid. Now in non-prescription strength as new Axid AR. A medicine so effective for many, Axid AR can prevent heartburn completely. New Axid AR. Time is on my side. Yes, it is. 
People today are living longer and healthier lives. And at Nature Made, we like to think we've been a part of it. As the makers of vitamin and mineral supplements that are recommended by pharmacists more than a thousand times a day. Nature Made, recommended by pharmacists, made for a lifetime. Dateline Tuesday. Imagine twins, one white, the other black. Inconceivable? Find out how one couple got the surprise delivery of their lives. Dateline Tuesday. Tonight we continue our series on America's charitable ways. We're calling it Who Cares? And we turn now to a motherload of potential donors. NBC's Roger O'Neill tonight on who they are. Gifts for her family. Every week, Twig Ertle reads to seniors in a nursing home. Like a fence without a style, like a dry and barren creek bed. Her sister Buff sings with Girl Scouts. Neither is out to change the world, but both want to make a difference by volunteering their time and sharing their family fortune with others. It's become... Um, a way of life. We give blood, we vote, we volunteer, and we give money. And there's an awful lot to give. Across the country, ten trillion dollars, according to a study by Cornell University. The money, some call the big give, will come from the parents of America's baby boomers. People who, after living through the Depression, saved their money and now have accumulated wealth. Before they die, they face the dilemma of what to do with it. Your particular situation. The experts say about 90% of the 10 trillion will be passed on to family. Protecting it from the government is a top priority. They're typically driven by saving taxes. Sandy Kramer, who wrote the book The 60 Minute Estate Planner, warns eight different federal and state taxes can take up to 55% of a person's wealth. I would say that is often the engine that drives the gift. After taxes and after family, it's still estimated in the next decade, a trillion dollars will be given away. Many of the affluent are turning to nonprofit foundations for help. We look for their passions. We look for the things that they really, really believe are critically important to society. Remember the Ertles? They turned to Denver's Charter Fund to identify worthy causes and then help funnel their money to them. But the family's passion to give comes from grandmother Theo. My father was a, a, a medical doctor. This was during the Depression. And uh, if someone needed him, there was no problem. He would, he would always go. We feel it's necessary to, to help those who, who aren't so fortunate. One of Theo's passions has been to fund Clinica Campesina in Colorado, which provides health care to uninsured, low-income families. The Ertl's money is making a difference here. And that's really what all rich people want to be assured of before they give, that their money will make a difference. Roger O'Neill, NBC News, Lafayette, Colorado. Tomorrow night, corporate giving, how your charity may get some of that money. That's Nightly News for Tuesday. Don't forget Dateline NBC tonight at 10. I'll see you back here tomorrow night. The world is now watching the NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw. NBC News, now more than ever.